Hi, I'm Iris Fritz with the Elfman Student Success Center at Dunwoody College of Technology. And I'd like to talk to you today about taking a series circuit and combining it with a parallel circuit to uh, have the result of what we call a combination circuit. So I've created a table that allows us to track information over six resistors because we have six resistors in this circuit. I've got a place where I can keep track of the totals, meaning the total information regarding voltage, regarding current over each as well as total, and resistance. And let's start to put in pencil. And what I think I'll do for this is uh, put everything that's given in black, and that'll be my, if you will, pen, and everything that I'm calculating I'll put in red. What we figure out together we'll put in red in the table so we can keep track. Now the reason why I say use a pen to fill in information that's given is it is not going to change or vary. It is what's given, it is how the circuit is running, and we're not going to be able to change or vary it. So if you put it in pen, it's not going anywhere. And yes, indeed, sometimes while we're calculating, we have to go back and we have to erase because we make mistakes. So uh, use your pencil, use your pen. Let's use your pen right now and put into the chart, into the table, what's given. Well, they tell us that there's 100 volts total. That is our voltage source. So voltage down in the total area, we're going to put 100 volts. With R1, there's no information regarding resistance or voltage drop. However, there is some information here regarding amperage. It says that there's two amps that has come through R1. So again, we have current flow going this direction. So if you will, where R1 is, let's go ahead and put two amps in. Coming over here, we know that R2 has 20 ohms. So R2 has 20 ohms. Put it under resistance. R3 has 10 ohms. R3 has 10 ohms. R4 has 10 ohms. Now, coming back this way, R5 has 10 ohms. And R6 has 10 ohms. And then, of course, we go back to source. So this is all the information that is given. And we have to determine what everything else is. We have to determine all the missing information. So let's get busy. As we go over to the redraws, we can also start to put some of this information into our redraws to help us. Now, what do we know about R1? There's two amps coming through R1. Well, if there's two amps coming through R1, and we use our redraws to help us think and come all the way over to the last redraw here, we actually know quite a bit of information right now. Two amps in a series circuit is constant. That's one thing we know. We know that current is constant, constant in a series circuit. So if I have two amps coming through R1, I also have two amps flowing all the way through this circuit. That means that I have two amps through R6. That must also mean that I have two amps through R5. And it must mean that I have two amps through R2, 3, and 4. And with that, I have more information that I can feed into my table. So let's go back to our table. I have two amps going through R1. That is also the total current through our circuit, isn't it? So I could actually start to put in, I think I might wait on totals, but you'll notice that I should have two amps for total current. Before I go there though, let's go ahead and look at our redraw, our third redraw, and see what else we know. We also know amperage through R5 and we know amperage through R6. So I'm going to start to fill in information. I know amperage through R5 because R5 is in series with R1. R6 is also in series with R1. And now is when I'm going to also fill in that there are two amps total in this circuit. Again, that third redraw helped me 
make this analysis. And what you'd learned before is if you have, if you will, two pieces to what I call that three-piece puzzle, we can start to figure out voltage. Because what do we know about voltage? Think about Ohm's law. We know that voltage is equal to current times resistance. We also know that current is equal to voltage divided by resistance, and we know that resistance is equal to voltage divided by current. So using what we know with Ohm's law, let's fill in the rest of our table. I have 2 amps times 10 ohms gives me a total of a 20 volt drop here. I have 2 amps times 10 ohms, another 20 volt drop here. Now, what else are we going to utilize from this to help us figure out the rest of our empty area here? We're going to use our redraws to help us think, as well as right now we could figure out our total resistance. So let's go ahead and figure out our total resistance for the circuit. We, that's one more thing that we can take care of. 100 volts divided by 2 amps gives us a total resistance of 50 ohms. Again, 100 divided by 2 is indeed 50. Now using what we know, let's go back to our circuit and see what we don't know and if this will help us figure it out. I go back to the second redraw and I'm going to start to piece together some information here. We knew that R3 had 10 ohms. We knew that R4 had 10 ohms. And in a series, in a series network, resistance adds up. So R3 and 4 has a total of 20 ohms. R2, that was given, R2 has 20 ohms. We're going to use what we know to help us look at this third redraw and put together more information. Well, one thing I know right now from the table, what we earlier calculated was there is a 20 volt drop over R5 and there is a 20 volt drop over R6. This network is a little more uh, complex because I had series that we put together here as well as this was in parallel with R2. And using your resistance formula for gathering up, uh, for determining resistance through this parallel network, you'll find out that you have 10 ohms over this. So how is that helping me fill out more information here. Well, wouldn't it be nice to know voltage drop over each of these resistive networks? And if I knew the voltage drop here, the voltage drop here, the voltage drop here, I could use what I know about Ohm's law in a series circuit. Voltage drops add up to giving you total voltage to determine what R1 is. We know there's 100 volts total. Let's first figure out what our voltage drop is over R2, 3, 4, and then we'll be able to deal with R1.